Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of North Hill, Michigan. And today we have something a little bit lighter for you. We can't do lawsuits and high-level presidential politics every day here in Virtual Legality. No, instead we just have a little bit of backroom management shuffling at our good friends 343 Industries, who have had a rather tumultuous reveal month for their keystone product, Halo Infinite. If you haven't been following this story, Halo just put out a tweet as of 11 p.m. Eastern last night, which is an interesting time to update the community on things, but fair enough. And they say, in this week's community update, we discuss Halo Infinite news, touch on Halo 3 ODST, flighting, outline Halo 5's calendar for September, and much more. Also an interesting summary of what is actually in here and what wound up getting reported on because they had some bigger news than even that. As we look at this, we see that this is a blog post on their Halo Waypoint website from their user, their community manager named Unishek called Familiar Facts. And we scroll through all the good news about Halo and all the things Halo people are excited about. Then we get to a couple of news items. One, trusted sources. Over the past two weeks, we've seen the internet fabricate numerous stories and fake leaks that have made people, including me, scratch their heads. From rumors of dropping support for the Xbox One to releasing the game in 2022, rather than 2021 where it's currently slated, there seem to be new headlines popping up every day. As we get closer to sharing more and more news, please only trust statements that are made by official Halo channels, members of our studio leadership, or members of the community team. Now, I think that's a perfectly fair statement for a community manager to make, for a public relations person to make. I think you should only ever, quote unquote, trust as at least from the source, those things that are in fact coming from that source. I do think you can get good information from outside parties, whether that's from investigative journalists, from leaks and what have you, but you are going to get a lot of noise with that signal. So I think folks that are interested in following Halo Infinite should take that under advisement when they talk about these kinds of things. But more importantly than just the trusted sources section of this particular news item is what they called helping hands. Now to give the context for this section, I want to talk a little bit about what happened over the past month or so when 343 Industries and Microsoft and Xbox got the internet and the fan base pumped and excited about the reveal of Halo Infinite gameplay for the first time in their big Xbox showcase. And it was basically received with a big thud. And I entitled that a messaging disaster. They had some problems actually articulating what was going to be on Series X versus what was going to be on Xbox One and how the Game Pass was to work, as well as showing off the potential power of their hardware through their Halo product. As soon as that happened, they changed their messaging. Said, hey, we're not talking about power anymore with respect to the Xbox Series X. Halo Infinite is something different. We are selling you a Game Pass. Don't worry about that. And we noted that in this space. One of the things we're always interested in in virtual legality is the messaging, not just the marketing, but how corporations talk about the decisions that they are making and how you can read between the lines as to the moves that they are making. They absolutely changed their messaging two days after their showcase. I think these articles were on the Monday after the Thursday of the showcase, so maybe three days. And then they delayed Xbox Infinite. I also called that a disaster, not for the product, I think that the delay seemed absolutely necessary based on what they had to show, but for their Series X launch, where they had tied the notion of you're wanting to buy a Series X, their next generation Xbox, to the fact that Halo Infinite was going to show off all that power that they had put into the box. So over the course of a little more than a month now, Halo Infinite went from crown jewel, exciting launch title to not very, very, very quickly. And one of the things I said in this video that's on your screen right now and that you can absolutely check out on this channel is that this was the kind of thing, Halo Infinite, that you had put all of your marketing around being delayed that could cause heads to roll. Now, what we see in the news that came out late last night is not necessarily heads rolling, Although that could be happening behind the scenes. These companies are clandestine in their operations and will never have full transparency as to what's occurring behind the scenes. But instead, adding people to effectively right the ship. Producers to come in and hopefully solve the many problems that Xbox and Halo Infinite appear to be having with their product that has been being worked on for at least a number of years. Some people say it's only been two years since they scrapped an original design. 
I don't know. I'm not sitting in those rooms. But it has been a long time since 343 released Halo 5, and they still don't have a product out yet. So let's talk about helping hands. As the team focuses on hitting our new launch window for the game, which it should be noted is a year, not a specific launch window. So they're just trying to hit 2021, and that'll hold up their end of the bargain. Two Halo veterans have offered their helping hands. Pierre Hintz, the head of our publishing team for the Master Chief Collection, will be joining the Halo Infinite team as a project lead for our free-to-play experience. Now, one thing that's important to note here is that as well as having all the announcements related to Halo Infinite and the Xbox Series X happen at the showcase, one of the things that got leaked out and then was confirmed by Halo and Microsoft was that Halo Infinite's multiplayer would be free to play, presumably monetized in some fashion with cosmetics or what have you, but that the actual entry point for somebody that has an Xbox was to be able to play Halo Infinite for free and to have that experience with everybody else, presumably to increase their audience base. I think it's an interesting idea. I think hopefully it works out for them. But free-to-play experience in this context should be read as multiplayer. Pierre is coming in to help project lead, and we'll talk about what that means based on the context that Xbox and Halo gives on this point in just a minute. They, he's coming in on project lead for the multiplayer experience of what is to be this Halo Infinite platform. He and his team have demonstrated an amazing ability to deliver new content, an excellent flighting program, and substantive updates across MCC over the past year. We look forward to having his expertise directly on the Halo Infinite team as we look to deliver a quality free-to-play multiplayer experience for everyone. And that's an important bit of news that even the multiplayer component of Halo Infinite is having somebody flown in to essentially drive the ship. And this is suggestive of some backdoor meetings at Microsoft in which Microsoft or Xbox or Phil Spencer or whomever says to 343, we need people here that can move this thing along in a more predictable fashion. We need to hit these bogeys. We need to get these experiences out the door. And whatever you are doing right now isn't working. Or it's 343 offering that up as a solution to their bosses and their bosses' bosses as well. The, the more important and more reported on story here is with respect to the campaign, the single player side of Halo Infinite. And last but certainly not least, we are excited to announce that our old friend Joseph Staten will be returning home to Halo for a bit. And we'll talk about that as well. After helping launch Tell Me Why this week, he'll be coming on board as project lead for campaign as we push towards our 2021 release. The team has been working hard, realizing our vision for campaign, and we're happy to have Joseph's help to get it to the finish line. So there's a lot of context there as well, right? Some people are reporting that Joseph Staten's going to come in and take over everything. I think Halo Waypoint here, this particular article is trying to be clear that he is coming in, yes, as project lead, and every video game company has different titles for who's doing what within their internal confines, so we can't really attach specific responsibilities just to that title, but it's clearly an important one, that he's coming in, as you can see in that last sentence, to help essentially perform a production role, to help the people that are currently the creatives on the campaign get what they need, as he says, Get what they need to make Halo great, as we see in the orange highlighted in the second paragraph. Joseph will be focused on supporting the campaign team's existing, talented, creative leaders and ensuring they have everything they need to create an awesome Halo game. That's usually what we would think of as a producer or an executive producer. And so, yes, he has this creative background, as we'll see. I've got his Wikipedia page ready. They describe it as saying he wore many hats while working at Bungie for all their Halo titles and even Destiny before joining us. And if you enjoy Halo's storylines, he's definitely one of the key people to thank. But they want to make clear that, yes, he's going to be project lead on campaign, but he isn't taking over creative responsibility. He is supporting the campaign team's existing talented creative leaders, ensuring they have everything they need to create an awesome Halo game. Now, that's interesting in and of itself because... Joseph Staten was one of the creative leads on Halo. And so you don't get necessarily this notion that what they want from their public relations, that he's coming back to save the direction of Halo, that they want that essentially reported on. That's why it's presented in that fashion. That's not actually what's happening. He was the director of cinematics, responsible for in-game movies for Halo, Halo 2, and Halo 3. He developed the mission scripts 
for those games. He talked extensively about it. He wrote a novel that was on the New York Times bestsellers list where Wikipedia says, reviewers noted that despite being an unproven writer, Staten had succeeded in creating an excellent novel. And then he worked as the writer and design director on Destiny before going over to Microsoft where he was the lead writer on ReCore. Now, I don't know if any of you are familiar with ReCore. It was a slightly smaller project on the Microsoft side of things. It's fine. It's nothing to write home about in terms of writing or direction or anything like that. And then, of course, Wikipedia, being as quick as it is to update, says, oh, and yesterday he was announced as the campaign project lead for Halo Infinite. So we're left with this notion that Halo Infinite was, in fact, in trouble, that people had to be flown in to take over the major production roles, to take over that production pipeline on both the multiplayer and single player side. Joseph Staten happens to be in Microsoft Publishing working on getting other games out for Microsoft, like Tell Me Why, which has nothing to do with any of this, but that was his role and a role that he is going to take on for 343 Industries to get Halo Infinite out the door sometime in 2021. And the question becomes, what else, right? number of people, after I tweeted about this particular story last night, said, well, maybe it's because Halo Infinite is going to be different, right? If you go back to Chris Lee, the head of 343's interview with IGN immediately after the reveal, he said, Halo Infinite is the start of our platform for the future. We want Infinite to grow over time versus going to those numbered titles. It's really going to be about creating Halo Infinite as the start of the next 10 years, very similar to Destiny, if we're being honest, but that they want this to be a platform. And so some people said, well, maybe Joseph Staten is coming on to be the creative lead for that platform. And I look at this and I don't read it that way. You know, we've got a lot of language here that is suggestive of 343 saying he's only coming in here on a temporary basis to essentially be a script doctor, only not necessarily working on scripts to fix up this product, to get it ready to go out the door for 2021. For a bit, you see highlighted here. He won't be doing what is we just set up here. You can see the word, however. As product lead on Halo Infinite, however, he'll be focused on supporting the existing creative leaders, not on doing all this story stuff that we just talked about, even though we know it will be reported that Joseph Staten has come home to what he helped orchestrate story-wise at the origin of this Halo franchise. So you've got a story now that is developing at Halo Infinite where... Despite them wanting to say there aren't any problems, this is all great news. There are clearly problems that somebody over there at Microsoft thinks needs fixing at a logistical level, if nothing else. You've brought in some voices from the past to help get you over that hump. And still, I don't know whether it's something that people should be able to rely on as making a big difference. I I think it'll be good. I think it's useful to know that Microsoft is putting resources on this, that they saw the reception that came out of their reveal of this product and said, hey, they need help. I think that's always good to see. I think Microsoft has been better about making those calls in the last couple of years than they were maybe prior to that. But you are still dealing with a product that had not just tumult over the last couple of months, but tumult really since its inception. You know, we've got an article here from WCCF Tech from October of 2019 that talks about the lead producer leaving. The lead producer, Mary Olson, has left the studio in October of 2019. You said in the next paragraph, following the departure of the game's creative director in August, Tim Longo, which actually spurred this same writer of this particular blog post, right, the community manager, Unishek, to make a Reddit post back in October of last year that said, hey, all, I wanted to jump in and clarify what their roles were because there seems to be confusion getting out in front of these kinds of stories to say Halo Infinite is fine. We now know that it definitely wasn't fine because of how it appeared to everybody and maybe the game will wind up great, but that it certainly had a lot of issues getting there. That Tim's role as creative director was to help make creative decisions around the design and direction of the game. And Mary's role as executive producer was to help drive the game to its completion for our holiday 2020 release date. So you see right here, the description of Mary's role, Mary Olson's role as executive producer and then lead producer driving the game to completion for 2020 mirrors quite well how they describe Joseph Staten's role. Joseph will be focused on supporting the campaign team's existing leaders and ensuring they have everything they need to create an awesome Halo game. And as we push towards our 2021 release. So what you've got here is appears to be a description of an executive producer type role described as project lead 
maybe to give additional color to what they're doing, maybe to present better for the public or the press, but you have a product that is very, very confused. This particular community manager right now also says, as part of the paragraph from October of last year when all of this was happening, says, it implies Mary took over creative control of the entire game, didn't like what she saw, and then decided to leave. If that's what actually happened, I could totally understand getting worried, but that isn't the case as she was a lead producer and not a new creative director. And yet, you appear to have people coming in, stepping into this role, and taking over creative responsibilities of some kind. Yes, in a production capacity, but you name somebody project lead for campaign, you're going to have these questions asked. Maybe you're going to be the face of marketing for the product now. And we have to hold our hands up and say, what exactly is happening with Halo Infinite? Now, understand, some people will come into the comments to videos like this one and say, hey, you hate Microsoft. You just want to see Halo fail. I want the exact opposite. I want Halo to be great. I think it is always a good idea to try to course correct if you can do it. And I think this represents a, an attempt at course correction from Microsoft. But I would be remiss to not mention that this game was supposed to release in about three months from now. And the fact that they have new people being flown in at this late stage for maybe trying to get a release out in 2021, while they're also combating quote unquote rumors that they're not going to hit that date or that they're going to have to scrap their previous generation Xbox approach to this product, that all kind of blends together. There are clearly issues with the development of Halo Infinite, and I hope that those get rectified. But unlike that famous Shigeru Miyamoto quote that says a delayed game is eventually good, a delayed game doesn't have to be eventually good. Delay gives it that possibility. But when you start to see news items like this, when you start to see people moving around like this, heck, we just did a video last week that talked about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 getting rid of its creative lead and lead writer when that game was supposed to release in about a month. That's never a good sign for the direction of the project. Could it eventually be better? Yes. But it could also wind up being solo where you wind up doing 90% of the movie over again and it doesn't have any tone of its own and you get this mishmash Duke Nukem Forever style product. Or as I said in my tweet yesterday, a new project lead for campaign and free to play, Halo, Halo is in interesting shape. This has been Virtual Legality for today. We do love talking about business and law of pop culture, especially video games, but also movies and music and television and all sorts of good stuff. If you like that, please like, subscribe, share, tell folks that we are here. We have most recently been covering the Epic versus Apple saga. Really, I think it's now 10 or 11 episodes in that playlist, so I highly recommend checking that out. We also read through the lawsuit that TikTok just entered against the Trump administration to try to block them from pursuing an executive order that itself would block transactions with TikTok. So I think that's an interesting one as well. Otherwise, if you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.